In this video, we're going to take a look at how I record my statistics for every single Catan game, and also take a look at the first 250 games we played on Catan Universe to see if we can't improve our game using the power of statistics. So one of the tools that I use to record my games is Salesforce. Um, in my job, I am a Salesforce administrator, um, and this software is actually free. Anyone could download it. You would just have to create your own object basically your own Excel table, if you will, uh, to import stats on. And that's what we've done here. We've built our Catan object. We've got things like the game name, game number, the link in YouTube, the start order. And with this, we can create reports, right? Based on the inputs of the data that we have here. And I import all kinds of different data from the type of settlements we get. This is like an eight sheep, five wood, 10 ore as our first settlement. From this, I can make formulas that calculate the production, how often, which numbers we're settling on, which production we're settling on, what resources we're settling on, all kinds of cool stuff. We record the ports, our strategies, the outcomes of our games, the ranks, longest road, etc., ELO scores. We record all those stats at the end of Catan Universe games, like trades and uh, uh, city settles, roads, etc. And we even record things like the amount of pips at each port so we can try to get a sense of how the ports are and even the amount of brick on the board. And we can actually compare these different board resources, so let's say like 15 wood, to the you know resources we have in our settlements to try to get a percent of how much of the resources on the board we're utilizing and uh, whether there's ways for us to improve. So using all this, we can actually go ahead and create some dashboards. So using all those different analytics, I can actually create dashboards and reports inside of Salesforce. So on this report here, uh, this is our main Catan dashboard. You'll, you'll see that this is our first 250 games. We're not including any games where we've had three or more quitters. Uh, you'll see here we have a 46% win percentage out of 250 games, 115 out of 250, 84 in second place. So we effectively finish in the top half of placements about 80% of the time, which is certainly pretty good. You'll also see here our starting positions. We spend a lot of time in the third and the fourth spots. We're in the third spot quite a bit more uh, than, say, the second spot or the other spots. This is the army and road. You'll see we, we wind up having either either one or the other or both in what 66% of games there's only 34% of games we don't have it and then here these are the different types of strategies that we've deployed one thing that I've noticed is we have been deploying the five restore strategy quite a bit and I think I actually want to cut down and do more hybrid or, or we cheap or or we cheap this is one of the reasons why I'm actually going to filter to the five resource strategy here. So you'll see here our win percentage when we go to the uh, five resource strategy is 46.24%. And we do tend to deploy it a little bit more often in the third and fourth spots, right, when we get those. Now let's compare this to how we do with, say, the hybrid or we cheap. So with hybrid or we cheap, we have a 53.45% win percentage. On regular or we cheap, it's 55%. I think there's room to improve some wins here by deploying more of the or we cheap strategies. Getting back to the full dashboard here, there's a whole bunch of other things we can learn as well. Like how do we do in each of the different start orders? So let's look at the start order for position one. And you'll see here we win 47% of our games in the start order. And you'll see we actually do deploy the or we cheap hybrid the majority of the time there, slide over the five resources. Start position two. You see we actually have a lower win percentage, right? It drops down to almost 43%. And we kind of overwhelmingly do the five resource strategy. This is kind of what I'm talking about. I think we could do better. Let's look at the third star position. Now, surprisingly, we actually do very well in the third star position. We have almost 48% win percentage. Again, we do tend to use the five resource strategy quite a bit here, followed by or we cheap the port. Now let's take a look at the fourth position and you'll see we're actually at 46%. So we tend to do better, believe it or not, in the third and fourth positions. Let's actually take a look at what happens in the games that we've won. Army and road section, only 7% of our wins occur when we don't have either the army, the road or both. Which is pretty amazing, right? We win the vast majority, obviously, with everything. And even more shockingly is we, we tend to have both almost as much as we have road and actually more than we have the army. Well, let's go take a look at some other game stats here. I have it by start order. I have it by the rank in which we finished. 
and I also have a buy strategy. You'll kind of see a couple of different things here. We actually tend to win games faster, and the longer games seem to get, the less likely we are to win. Same thing with the rounds. I think the rounds particularly shows us even more so. 59 rounds are, is our average win. Anything in the 60s or above, we kind of get worse and worse at. Generally, if we're going to win, we want to do it quicker. The longer the game is, the less likely we are to win. You're also going to see on the right here, when we come to different strategies and ELO change, how well stuff like the Orwe Cheap and the Hybrid Orwe Cheap do in terms of average ELO change. And you'll also notice how much faster the Hybrid Orwe Cheap games are than, say, the Orwe Cheap or even the Five Resource games. There is quite a bit of difference. It's also interesting to note which strategies are not working for us. We're just not very good at the road building strategies, the road builder or the city road. We don't do well. Obviously, in the city and road, we tend to punt sheep. And in the road builder, you tend to punt ore. And quite frankly, we can't defend ourselves as well because we can't buy cards. There's just a lot less knight production in victory point production than in any of the other game types. And that's really a problem because we can't defend ourselves. We're kind of at the mercy of the seven to get it off of our higher producing spot. These are all the stats that you see at the end of the Catan Universe game. Trade, settlement, cities, roads, robbed, consecutive roads, knights, and victory points, and then the total number of games that we've had. You're going to notice in the rank one uh, some things that are pretty glaringly obvious. We do tend to get more cities than anywhere else. In addition, the knights and the victory points do make a big difference in terms of finishing in rank one, which should be a surprise to nobody. Same thing with the consecutive routes. If you're enjoying the content of this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I upload daily Catan gameplay videos and sometimes upload educational and strategic videos like this one. Now, where I think the really more interesting stats are actually in the uh, game start order and the strategy. In the start order here, you're really going to see a couple of interesting things, right? One, I think, is this average robbed. Look how much more we're likely to get robbed in the first position than, say, the third position. And as a result, we tend to play more knights at 2.68. And as a result, we also tend to draw a few more victory points just because we're buying more cards. And you'll also see our amount of roads actually decreases because, again, we're emphasizing those or wheat sheep strategies more often. I thought this would be kind of interesting and actually pretty consistent. In terms of the amount of times we're robbed when we play the port strategy, you'll actually see it's 5.79. And quite to my surprise, the lowest is actually the hybrid or we cheap, which only averages about four robs a game. This just goes to show you there is a bias against those resource port strategies where you have like a wood port or a brick port or something. People really don't like those and really try to block those as much as possible. And then take a look at the knights too. You can definitely see when we're going full or we cheap, just how, how much more knights we're likely to have. Same thing with victory points than with any other strategy. It is a little interesting with the hybrid. I kind of thought this would be a little bit better but you know there is a little bit of a difference right when we're in hybrid obviously we're a little bit more mobile and so we can build an additional road on average and additional settlement almost on average more than when we play the or we cheap strategy let's now look at some of the different katan production that we get from each of our settlements and ranks in the production total you'll see there is a curve rank one we have higher production than in rank four and this is starting settlement production so on average, the more production you have, generally the better and more likely it is that you're going to win a game of Catan. Here you're actually going to see the first settlement versus the second settlement. A couple of other things I, I think were very interesting. Look at this in the fourth place here. You'll see the amount of wheat we have. I think we're guilty of actually getting too much wheat sometimes. And in games where we get too much wheat, we tend to lose. Uh, on the top here, you'll see ore and sheep are actually pretty even, followed by wheat, whereas in these fourth and third sections, it's just not the case. Now, sometimes that's just because we can't produce ore because we're in a worse starting position or something. But yeah, generally, you want to have high wheat, but you don't want to overkill it. Make sure not to skimp on the sheep as well, because that's just doomed for failure. Now, if we scroll down here, we're actually going to see it on the start order. Obviously, we're going to do more of an ore wheat sheep strategy where possible in that first order. And just look how much more ore we get. We get almost a whole pip of ore more in the first starting spot than in any of the other starting spots, which is one of the reasons why we say going first does matter. Take a look at the settlement production. You'll see in the first position, 11.61, by far the highest. And then in the second, it dips all the way down to 8.53. Some of this is because of ports, right? 
will place on a two spot where there's a port. So we're actually okay with that dip in production as long as we're getting the port. And you'll see the kind of the reverse here on settlement one and two of the fourth starting order. We'll see less generally. A lot of times it's because we will take a port first and then go for production, or we're a little less concerned about production and more curious about getting the road on the second settlement if, if there is a starting wood brick spot. So it is kind of interesting just to take a look at these two. And you'll see there is also a curve from the first order with the most production all the way down to the fourth spot getting the least production. Let's take a look at the different strategies and how these things work. So you'll see our highest producing strategy is actually the road builder. And I think a lot of that's because we're just going for you know total production. We're not worried so much about ore, but look how much less ore we're actually getting. Um, and we have not been that successful with Road Builder. I think we have like a 42% win percentage when we deploy the strategy. And again, this is a big reason why. And also take a look at, say, or we cheap, right? And or we cheap hybrid, just how much our first production spots are getting. They're really quite high, higher than average. Uh, and again, we can really utilize that on the ore and wheat, because just look at you know, the amount we're getting here. We're really overloading or we cheap in those different hybrid and standard or we cheap productions. And again, that makes a difference. Let's take a look at uh, how we've been placing. So here, this is just showing you the average rank one, two, three, four, right? Over the course of our 250 games, it's kind of neat to see. This here was our best stretch starting from game 119 all the way to game 96. I think it was something like 70 something games where we didn't finish in fourth place and that really makes a huge difference let's take a look at the elo so you'll see here we started out our first game on katan universe uh since they did the update at 1247 way back in uh january and we were kind of sitting in no man's land there for a while we kind of bottomed out here at uh 1234 or so and then we actually had a pretty dramatic increase where we went all the way up to 1398. We actually did get higher than that. We got up to 1406, but that was on a quitter game. This does not include quitter games. That was our peak. So yeah, we had this pretty dramatic rise. And one of the reasons is we had really very few third place finishes in here and zero fourth place finishes. Um, and you could just see how quickly you can kind of shoot up the ranks here uh, if you're not finishing in third and fourth in Catan Universe. But also, how quickly you can just start dropping down the second you get those third place finishes, right? We went from 1384 all the way down to 1338 in three games because we had three straight third place finishes. And hopefully some of the results of this video are going to help us improve and get back up to the 1400s.